All right, so all of the seeded plants that uh, Matt started back in, I don't know, February are now living outside. So we've got all kinds of stuff out here. We've got some milkweed. We've got some hardy hibiscus. We've got um, quite a bit of tomatoes. We've got some canas. Um, I think some other vegetables. I'm not quite sure what's over there. And then we're going to try something new this year. We have a um, artichoke. And then I forgot what this was. Oh, fennel. So, and then of course, um, oh, we got a, you want to do some poblano peppers. And I think over here, um, our usual Brussels sprouts. So this table is just covered with a bunch of stuff that uh, all of the vegetables, as you saw in episode one, are going to go out to the hay bales that are still being seasoned um, with their like 12 day, um, I guess, decomposition process. Um, so planting will happen soon to the vegetables. We use this bad guy today, this tiller that um, Matt's dad had <laughs> before he was born. And the thing was sitting outside his parents' house for 10 years not running and we found a small machine guy in the area to fix it up and it's working pretty much like brand new and then this little guy we did today so i was telling you about our perennial um uh, water feature garden so we have um these are annuals um these will like kind of bush out or whatever but these are dusty millers um we have some salvia we have some blanket flowers. We have a um, version of a cone flower. We have some grasses. Um, and then we have some hardy hibiscus that were from seed. So these will get humongous. Um, and this one is called the party favor hibiscus. So the hibiscus, if you've seen those flowers, this one in particular, they get like as big as the size of a dinner plate. So they're ridiculous and they're gorgeous. Um, so eventually once this all grows up, this whole area should fill in um, with the hibiscus and then the grasses should grow up. And then this is our little um, water bowl from the old house. So we'll fill this up. We'll do some um, water plants on that shelf there and then this little fountain and then some water plants some water lettuce water hyacinth maybe a lily throw some goldfish in there and we will be good to go with this little fun little feature um, so doing a lot of planting still um, we'll eventually need to do a large order of mulch to fill in all of these beds that we've tilled up and cultivated so um, the soil here is a lot of clay, um, so we added um, this whole bed area we measured and it's probably like 70 square feet. Um, so we added one bag of compost and um, just one big bag of um, peat moss um, just to amend the soil a little bit. And then um, I can share maybe somehow in the comments of this. Um, we've been following this really awesome um, YouTube channel and she has an Instagram channel um, or an Instagram, I guess, and as well, but her, um, her Instagram handle is Garden Answer and she's, um, she is a, um, I guess, promotes proven winners or whatever, or, um, so if you know that flower brand, but she has this brand uh, that she endorses um, and uses it in pretty much all of her plants. So we got this at a local greenhouse, but um, kind of expensive stuff. So we didn't actually follow really the recipe 
on the back for plant size and then how many cups or pounds or whatever. We just threw a handful in. Um, hope it'll give it some little bit of food um, for all the new plants that we just planted. Um, and then I'm really excited if you saw the pool last time, check this out. So we looked up all the rules about why the fence needed to be there and we can't seem to find any reason why we need it because our yard is fenced in, it's above the grade of rule that it's supposed to be and then there was some other rules so we're like we're taking this down and it just opens up this view like so amazing so just pulled the pool cover off finally and we're looking pretty good so just slapped the uh, garden hose in there so we'll see how long this takes to fill but we're working on that and then this little area so we wanted to make the pool entrance kind of tropical so we're kind of excited about that but um haven't had the best of luck um with this particular plant we're gonna try it again uh, matt is determined to make this succeed so this is actually a meyer lemon so um all of so this plant this tree i'll share with you in a second and then everything in here um is all tropical so can grow in our zone five but um needs to be pulled in in the winter this is all would be all annual things um but so this is a meyer lemon so this will eventually be tree size but obviously little plant right now so will need to be pulled in in the winter time this one that i had been keep uh seeing around at the stores um we went we've been to menards we've been to home depot um, this one we bought from Meyer. This is a gardenia. If anybody knows what that smells like, oh, it smells like heaven. So, um, this is a tropical tree, so we'll need to live indoors. Got a new little fun, uh, plastic farmhousey looking pot for it, so I'm excited to let some mulch or rocks or whatever. Um, these guys are begonia, um, so they don't flower like the other begonias you might um, be familiar with, but they just look so fun. They look like, I don't know, tropical and Jurassic, and this one, I don't know if you can tell or not, but the leaves are um, have a little bit of iridescence to them, so that's kind of fun. And then I just threw in this... Um, this would be maybe just a um, version of a uh, Super Bells um, plant here. And then these guys are Mandevilla. So you probably may have seen these um, at the greenhouses and things. Um, so this particular one is more um, bush-like. So it'll just mound and sort of bush. Um, this is actually one, two, three plants. Um, and then this fun thing, we thought it looked, it made us think of like a banana leaf, it's not. And then we just threw a couple of the um, canas in there. So uh, Mandevilla, you can also get it where it uh, will grow up sort of a trellis vine thing. So um, if anybody, wants any reference to any of these plants i'm happy to post like um maybe in the comments pictures of the tags um we did save that but this is our kind of little tropical area and then this pot will be perfect here because these guys actually want to be in the shade um so they'll get a little bit of afternoon sun but then with the height of this pot it'll provide some shade so that'll be good um I showed you back the hay bale area. Nothing really much has progressed there. Um, and then big mess on the patio, but we're working on it. So, um, so this will be um, eventually a perennial bed that'll match what we have planned for the front. Um, but 
it right now it's just a huge empty space so the plan I think for this summer is to um, do just a huge mix of zinnias in here um, and that way that'll give me some cut flowers and then it won't be just a dead looking bed um, and then just mulch and then this is our internet cord so we are going to bury that um, and then we were worried about just digging and eventually you know hurting it anytime in the future so we did get some corrugated um, pipe to put that internet cord in and then bury it so we have to figure out how to cut this cut this guy um, I think we might have to use a reciprocating saw so got to do that um, these were some hydrangeas that were buried in the ground in the front yard so um, our area that I had showed you over there where you can see behind the hammock um, there's a bunch of empty pots and things over there that are just staged because they'll eventually be filled um, will be our perennial bed so nothing really planned there maybe the arbor that I had talked about in episode one for like a privacy screen um, but I think a lot of our potted things might just be staged in that area just for some color and some interest because um, I don't know if anybody knows, but um, plants are expensive, so <laughs> I'm sure you all know that, but so a lot of this stuff has to be done in stages, just we don't want to like spend so much money this summer, but um, but a lot of these things too then, you know, we're planting like this whole entire bed except for the Dusty Millers are all perennials, so they should all... Uh, impending a harsh, harsh winter, they should all come back next year and be even bigger. So um, stay tuned for the growth and progress of this. I'm really excited to see how big the um, hibiscus get and the grass and everything, because um, they look obviously really super tiny compared to that cone flower, but um, we'll get there. So, and I promised you I would show you the back, the front yard another day, so we had to mow <laughs> the grass was so long we had to bag it so that was pretty terrible but um this is our whole pile of amendment so we've got some peat moss we've got the potting mix um for our all of our containers and then we've got the bags of compost um and then this was a new mix that we found at um Menards, I think it was, and I forget what the plan was with that. I think it was to use with some tomato pots or something like that. I'm not sure. Um, but I'll take you to the front and can kind of show you the progress up there, which is just mostly containers. Um, so when I showed you already, this whole area was going to be canas and peonies and then some sort of um, low growing perennial. So we probably will get to this because we do have the canas to plant and then we'll figure out where the best place is to get peony bulbs. But I think those can't be planted until the fall. So those obviously won't, we won't have any peonies this year. The peonies are, they bloom in the spring and right about now if we had them, they would probably pretty much be done blooming and then they're just like a green sort of hedge or shrub or whatever. Um, those are blueberries. Those need to, um, they're just in pots and they need, just need to come out of the ground. But this is our whole front area here. So this bed just kind of curves around the front and then we've got a bed along the sidewalk. So um, the eventual plan which again is probably not happening this summer, but um, we will um, till up this whole area. Um, the front here, there was a couple of really small wigalia bushes 
and some daylilies and the daylilies were split and transplanted to the side of the house with that project you saw. Um, so here, what I really would love to do and we'll see if this ever works out and comes to fruition is um, this little curve area on the side here. I would love a dwarf weeping cherry tree. Um, look them up they're so pretty and I think it would be perfect here because it doesn't get too big because it's a dwarf size um, and then I don't want to necessarily cover up the porch because I had this fun little um, set up here I got some new pillows and my um, rocking chairs and I'm looking for a really specific table found one at Home Depot but it was scratched and stained and wasn't going to spend money on that so um, still on the hunt for that and then I've got a cute little sign for the table and a little citronella candle so it's my little outdoor sitting area and then we just did these hanging baskets up here um, so that'll be fun and we're just keeping an eye on them because Matt was a little worried that the hook is secure but we did everything we could so hopefully they don't come crashing down <laughs> Um, fingers crossed um, but those hanging baskets we actually had at the old house and they um, can they were kind of um, sun damaged so we bought some brown um, spray paint that's good for their plastic um, and just freshened them up and they look like brand new so that was great yeah but this will all be so this will all be tilled up so dwarf cherry tree and then along the concrete, um, we would like to do like boxwoods and Annabelle hydrangeas, kind of every other. And then in front of that, I believe the plan was um, um, salvia, which you saw in the back. And there's lots of different colors of those, purples and pinks and all that kind of stuff. So we'll have to decide on what we want to do with that. And this is, these are all perennials, so this would all come back. Um, and then in front of the salvia, um, actually no, I think it was boxwoods, hydrangea, then sedum, because they flower and they're just green, and then salvia, and then along the brick line, um, some hookera. So there's lots of different colors of hookera, um, and the whole plan with this too is that um, the bed and everything, the plants, we want some to have some winter interest, so no nothing would be completely dead in the f late fall, winter time. So like the boxwoods are like an evergreen, um, the, I think the sedum, I can't remember, maybe. Um, and then the dwarf cherry tree obviously wouldn't have leaves, but it, you know, it gives it a little bit of interest. So, and then we would love to redo the brick, but uh, maybe we're just going to fix it and power wash it and kind of clean it up. But um, we have very lofty goals, people. So, yeah, you probably think we're crazy. But, um, so till up this whole bed. This is a lilac, so that was here when we got here, and it was actually as tall as like that, I don't know if you can see that little white hook on the side there. It was super tall, and I don't like blocking off the porch, especially because I had my fun little scene up here with my welcome sign and my lanterns and stuff. Um, so we completely trimmed it down, and it's growing back really nice. So I think for now, we're just gonna probably leave it there. Um, that fun little rock we got a couple years ago at the Kane County Flea Market. Um, so I love that little piece there. Um, and then we planted all these containers up here. So we've got some um, marigold and some lantana. The hummingbirds love this stuff and the butterflies. So this will bush and get huge. Um, and then this little fun watering can is just um, sweet potato vine and then these are super tunias and then we've got some um, fountain grass this is some sort of filler I can't remember the name right now um, these are orange begonias and then red begonias um, and that pot is the same 
And then this one just has the um, super bells. And then in the middle, I know you can't see, is a super bina. Um, so I can show the tags. I'll show that at the end. Um, so yeah, anyways, this whole bed will be tilled up. And then plan is sort of to mirror what is happening over here. So hydrangeas, sedum, hookera, and then behind, um, since this is such a long wall and we want to kind of take advantage of, this is the side of our garage, we would love to do some climbing um, roses. So um, a couple of square tall arbors, maybe we'll have to measure this out, maybe, I don't know, three, and then do some climbing roses up the side of the garage. So. That is the whole entire plan for the lighter compound. <laughs> um, obviously not all gonna happen this summer. Probably not even gonna happen at the end of next summer. So this is, this is several summers and stages, but um, I think we really liked that there was just a completely blank space so that we could just do what we wanted with it. So um, probably the plan for this summer, since we aren't, we're probably not gonna do any planting in either of these beds will just be to till it up and mulch it so that it looks clean. Um, and then we've um, got to do um, some work with our um, gutters. We have a system that's like kind of a bubbler system that Matt ordered. So it'll shoot down into sort of like a screen that goes into a pipe in the ground underneath the sidewalk and then this like tube sort of like elbow tube that shoots up so it like directs it further away from the house and then um, underground and we don't have issues with sort of um, erosion and whatever um, so yeah that's kind of our whole entire plan um, I would love to freshen up our front door as well there was a kickboard down there um, so I, I need to find a good paint color but um, that's kind of the plan so I will take you back and show you those plant tags um, so you can kind of see um, and then another fun little tip um, actually is um, if you go on the proven winners website they actually they actually give you recipes for container gardening so you can put in um, the size of your container you can put in the season you can put in um, the if you if it's full Sun if it's part shade if it's um, parts on part shade um, if whatever theme color scheme you want so actually I did that um, this year for the first time which was really fun sort of frustrating a little bit because if you're going to a big box store like Home Depot they're not necessarily gonna have those exact um, like like super bells for example that are in this um, hanging basket there's so many different colors of them um, so they're not maybe necessarily gonna have that but at least it gave me some inspiration or idea so um yeah but i'm going to show you the tags so you can kind of see a little bit more about the plants that i showed you back into the messy backyard but we'll get there we'll get there people all right and hubs is grilling away on his pit boss we're having some brats for dinner so let me show you here all of the tags all right so we've got so this was the grass that I showed you behind the um, water bowl so this is a um, made in grass it is a perennial for full sun so that definitely is a perfect spot for it um, so eventually it will get 
um, 36 to 40 inches high and then we spaced it nicely I think 30 to 36 um, and then for we are in zone 5 so you want to make sure you're buying plants for zone 5 you can buy something that's not but then just know it's not gonna necessarily survive through the winter um, so fun thing about grass maybe you don't think about is it does bloom so when it gets tall enough it's gonna have that fun like kind of I guess bottle brush sort of look to the top of it so that's our grass and let's see the Meyer lemon so when we did have the one before it actually did bear um, some lemons um, so not very many but um, it did so ever bearing if we take care of it right it should mean that it just keeps bearing fruit during its harvest season um, so yeah that's kind of the lemon tree and then this was the gardenia um, so full sun so perfect spot for it over there by the pool um, regular water um, just take care of the blooms that are dead it's not winter hardy so obviously yes we will bring it in um, in the fall um, here's the rex begonias so those shade so those are in a good spot and they will get 8 to 12 so not too big and they'll bush out so um, so there's another, that was another one. Um, the flower that was in the same pot as those Rex begonias was this one, the Calabra, Calabracho, I don't know how to pronounce that, um, Cali, Calabracho, I don't know. So yeah, so that's why it's on that one side of the pot, so hopefully, um, the Rex begonias will get the shade from the larger pot and then the flower on the other side. So positioning is key. And then blanket flowers. Um, yeah, not really much to say about those, I guess. They're in the water bowl garden. They're right there. Um, so these will, um, kind of bush up and kind of spread a little bit and then this was the um, variety of salvia that we got so the color new dimension blue so like I said there's pinks there's deeper purples um, so th these will get a lot bigger um, I don't know if you can see that um, they spread six to eight, they get eight to 10 inches high. Um, so think about that too, if you don't know much about gardening when you're planting, think about, you know, those uh, hibiscus are tiny, but um, think about the eventual height of the plant. You know, so the way we planted this was that it's tall and then it kind of tears down, like kind of like a scoop with the height of the plants. Um, this is the coneflower that is in there, the Cheyenne Spirit. So coneflower, or as um, I call it coneflower, I don't know, but yeah, you can call it echinacea. Um, and I think that is pretty much it on the tags. So um, 